What's up YouTube? I got a lot to say, so I'm just going to get right into it. The video is more so about parasites and uh, the body in general and how it's a vessel of light. Sorry, I, you know, it took a while, you know, I've been getting right with myself, cleansing and everything, so um, just, just, uh, just soak this up real quick because this is really, this is really real here. So, um, everything is energy and everything is light. The body really is energy. It's it's really just an energy body, like a light body, like just it really there really is no such thing as solids. But uh, I've said that before. But really, the body is just a, a being of light, as everything is a manifestation of light. And um, basically, this is just the dense manifestation. This is the densest level because really, I don't want to say physical because it really it's all physical. A thought is physical. Anything that can be measured is physical. You can measure brain waves, so it's physical, you know. It's just less dense. This is just a dense manifestation right here. So, you know, light is, everything is light, like I'm saying. Sound is a form of light. I know people want to argue that, but gas is just a little more dense form of light. Water is, you know, getting a little more dense, uh, another form of light. And then you go into plants. Animals, insect, animal, insects are really animals, but you know, I don't want to argue. I don't want to argue, I'm just saying, just take it in. Regardless, it's all light. They're all bodies of light and different levels of density. And um, if all you're eating is dense food, because really there are many forms of food, like I said um, in other videos, that music is food. I know a lot of people don't want to say that it's nourishment, but it is. Why do you think in weight rooms they have music on? Or in, in a lot of settings, they have music on for people to feed off of. And in clubs, you don't think that people are feeding off the music? You don't think that. You don't think that it's all, it's all energy in general, everything? You don't think that every move, motion or movement that you make is, is energy? And that it, it really it will ripple? And that's the case with everything. But anyway, so if you only eat dense food, you will stay grounded in this dense existence. That, that, that's all you're indulging in is this dense food. And you know, again, like I said, light is food. So sunlight, that's food. It's just a less dense form of food. But it's all light, it's just different levels of density. So you know, water, you know, if you're liquidarian, waterian, which basically I am at the moment, you're just less dense. Even though water is very dense even still. Just to let you know how dense we are. We're really, we're very dense. And that's where the expression comes from. Are you that dense? You know, because at some level we know everything that's going on. So, if you're eating din just dense manifestations of light, you'll stay at this dense level of existence. You won't be able to move about the other layers. There's as many layers to the existence. You know, dreaming, what people call dreaming, it's just another layer of, it, of the existence. You know, it, it, there really are just, there are many, many, many different layers of the existence and you can't consciously experience them if you're just totally dense. And um, that's, you know, it's really what's happening. You know, everybody is, you know, completely in this paradigm of if it's not densely in front of me, if it's not tangible like that, then it's not food. If it's not, if I can't grab it, if I can't pick it off a tree or if I can't kill it or whatever and eat it, it's not food. That's not considered food. Music isn't food, light's not food. Water, I don't consider water food. Why don't you consider water food? You know, if they, you know, people really don't understand that you need water because you're eating food. Like you're eating dense food. I should I should use a better term than food because there are many forms of food, like I said, but if if you're eating dense food, you must drink water. Because the you know your your body will call for the water to cleanse, like in the case of somebody on an acid diet, and they think that they're bulking. They're really just the body is just holding on to more water because you're so acidic that the body calls for more water to balance the pH. And then uh, you know on top of that you have a higher fat content. You know if you're eating fattier things, if you're living on an acid diet, you're most likely you know have a higher fat content. So you know, what we call bulk is really water weight, inflammation, and fat. So really, you know, people don't even know what health is. They don't know what strength is, what it looks like. They just think bulk. 
and you know, it, it that just doesn't have longevity. It really just does not have longevity. Like I said, you see a lot of old guys, you see a lot of fat guys, you do not see a lot of old fat guys. And that's what big bulky dudes turn into. They turn into fat dudes. They're already fat. They've just been working out and then eventually the energy will continue to be broken over time and then they will deteriorate. They're already deteriorating, but then they'll get to a point where they can no longer fight the fat. Okay, regardless. Alright, you know, I got I got a little into the, the density thing there. So like I said, dreams are uh, you know another layer of the existence. You really shouldn't call them dreams. You really shouldn't call it sleeping. You're just unconsciously meditating basically when you go to sleep, because it's just a meditation. Your body is recharging. This physical body is recharging, and you know your your consciousness is is basically being projected in another physical realm, whether it be dense or less dense or whatever. So. If you're unconsciously going to sleep without a purpose every night, you know, you won't experience that realm. You won't know that realm. You know, you're already so distracted in this physical, dense realm with, you know, bills and, you know, all the, you know, kids or whatever your distractions are, whatever your, you know, school or whatever it is, whatever, however you're being distracted, you, you know, you have to understand that you're being distracted and that, you, you know, you need to know that you're so distracted in this dense level that you never experience the other layers consciously. You're not even conscious in the dense level. So when you go to these other layers dreaming, you're totally unconscious. And other things are feeding off your energy in, in that other realm, but I'll get into that. So since you're totally unconscious, you know, you know, you never realize like when you're dreaming, have you ever looked at your reflection in a dream? Have you ever saw who you were in a dream? No, you're probably distracted with the dream. With, you know, shootouts or falling or flying or driving or crashing or whatever's going on in your dream. You're so distracted that you can't even look at yourself. You can't even look at your reflection and see who or what you are. And then when you wake up in the physical, your, you know, your physical explanation for something was like, I was with you or this or that, I was doing this. But really, you're so unconscious, you don't even realize that you were in another layer of the existence with those other energy bodies, but they may not have looked the same physically. For example, like if you're in a dream with your sister, and you know you wake up and you say, "I was in the dream with you," you know, and then they say, "Like, so you saw me? You knew it was me?" And then in a lot of cases, some people say, "Like, nah, but I just knew it was you." Really, if you look at your reflection, you'll see. It's not a surprise, basically. I'll just leave it at that. So we are so dense and preoccupied with the distractions of this dense physical layer, we just never find out who or what we are. So, um, you know, you would understand if you were less dense, you would know when it's you thinking or another energy occupying your vessel, thinking for you, driving you to do things. So, this, you know, this is what I mean when I say people don't own their thoughts. And uh, they're, they're be basically being driven by, driven by other things against their will. You're driven by other energy bodies. In most cases, it's parasites. Most people have parasites, especially if you eat meat. In all likelihood, you have parasites. So, the body is a vehicle. It's a vessel of life. And you're just occupying it with this consciousness. So, with that said... That it's a vehicle. When you're going to sleep every night, I know some people have used this expression. It's basically like parking your car in a bad neighborhood with the keys in it. When you wake up every morning and the car is where it's at, but the car is just beat up. You knew somebody drove it. That's basically what's going on in the dense level and then in the less denser levels. So the body can be hijacked. The vehicle can be hijacked, if you will. And this can be done in many ways. Like I said, parasites, other energy bodies entering your vessel, drugs ingesting things at improper times, time being cosmic movement, you know, like, you know, call, we, we measure the, the, the light and we call it a day or a night. And really, you know, you know, really it's just cosmic movement. It's not really time. There's, time is all perception. And that's how, you know, I get into the fact that it's just an ever-changing now moment and that there is no concept of time. It's just existence. It just is. There is no beginning or an end to it. So, with that said, you are, you are immortal, whether you want to believe it or not. 
you're just going to unconsciously come into bodies and out of bodies and you're just going to be parasitically ate off of. Your energy will just be eaten off of for eternity. You know, because you will always be here in this existence. Whether you're dense or less dense. You know, like if it's a traumatic incident where somebody gets their head shot off. Yeah, like, you know, that physical, you know, that physical body may be considered dead. But that consciousness really just left that dense physical physicality and just moved into less denser realms of existence. But it's still present. That's like why you say, oh, I feel my grandmother or I feel this ancestor. Because an element of them is still there physically, just less dense. So like I said, parasites. Parasites are really what's driving people and they're really running the world right now. And, and really, or this world, I should say. So think of the body as a conduit, as you, if you will. Parasites occupy an open body. They drive that body to do things beneficial to the parasite. Parasites live inside you in colonies. And, you know, there's been many examples of this, depictions of this, like in the cartoon Futurama. And that's just for one example that the parasites are consciously living inside you. They are intelligent beings. They've been here since eternity, as you have. So they know what they're doing. They're intelligent. They, everything is an intelligent being. You know, like, you know, you just really discredit things, but you're discrediting yourself when you say stupid animal or whatever, you know, you discredit, you've already discredited yourself and that's why you spilled it off and onto something else. And you're saying it's unintelligent or whatever. So the parasite is living inside you in colonies. And now you see why colonialism has happened in the world. Because it's a physical manifestation. What is in is what's out. So if you have parasites in you, you have parasites around you. Just look at an entertainer. Look at Lil Wayne, for example. I don't even think he's the most talented. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying for an example. He has talent. He's not my favorite, but I'm just saying that he is, you know, a person who is generating a lot of energy. And you see the parasites around him to drive him to the point where he's in jail. He was in jail because he was living. He, was, he had parasites within, so they were without. They were outside. So it's really a reflection of within the outside world is. So basically the outside world is a physical, dense, physical, dense ex manifestation of the inside world. You, because you are a world or a universe. You're really a universe or a world within a world within a world. But, you know, I digress. So, you know, really... You know, the body can be open or cracked in many ways. You know, hybridization, you know, breaking of the molecular structure. That's, you know, that's how parasites get in. That's why cultivars need to be sprayed. Their molecular structure has been broken. So parasites, bugs, whatever, they can get in and feast off that because they are broken structures. They're open vessels. So, like, you know, like in the case of a dog, it's a hybrid being. That's why it can be. All right, I'm gonna get into that in a second. I'm just gonna. Get, that's a little too much. So other ways the body can be cracked or open to let parasites in or other things occupy the body. Disease or trauma in your life. You know many different ways to crack that body, to crack, to break that energy, so you can get inside of it and occupy it. Like I said, a dog is an example of a cracked or open vessel. A cat is more difficult to occupy because it's more ancient of a being. It's not cracked. It's not hybrid. Or it's not as hybrid, I should say. And it, so it knows itself more. And um, that's why dogs go crazy over certain individuals. You may, your dog might love everybody. And some certain person comes in and it hates that person. It, it just despises that person. It will refuse, barks, growls, hates to be in the presence of that person. Why do you think that is? You think that it's for no reason. There's, nothing is for, there's no such thing as nothing. The dog knows that it's, it's vulnerable. It knows that it's cracked. In many cases, dogs know themselves more than the owner. And even though they're, you know, because they're, they're both cracked beings in most, in most circumstances. So, the dog knows that it's vulnerable. So it says, hey, you know, since it's clinging to this owner that it's taking on, that's why they say dogs look like the owner, it's clinging to you, barking, letting you know, like, you know, there's a presence coming here, I'm vulnerable, I'm letting you know there's something occupying this being coming in. Whether, you know, and you might say, it's just my aunt, you know? No, there's parasites or something occupying your aunt. And it's driving that person's actions. How do parasites do that? Basically, they, 
just hijack your body. They get, you know, in a physical sense, they crack into your spine, your spinal cord, you know, and they basically get into your brain. And they control your actions and thoughts and everything. They know that if they get you high or they get you depressed or they get you in circumstances, they know you get you flustered. And you know, a lot of people eat out of emotional reasons, so they know if they get you to that point, then you will eat, you will feed them and their millions of children. So, um, like I'm saying, the dog senses that an individual is occupied. You know, another reason why dogs just up and run away, or a dog just, you know, you ever, you ever heard of a dog just, you know, go snapping for no reason because it was being occupied. You know, and I don't even want to get into this, but dogs basically are there as a, almost as a spy because they can be occupied. They're more open vessels. They're basically a camera. You know, and I know people don't understand the, you know, the whole projection of consciousness thing, but everybody is really a camera, you know, it, you know, because really, I don't even want to get into that. It's, that's hard to, to grasp for a lot of people, so I'm just going to let that go. So, and, you know, a dog might run away, and, you know, they have been occupied. You know, a dog get 20, 30 blocks away and be like, where am I at? And, you know, you say, you know, it's basically being used as a conduit to distract the owner. And, and that's the case for most things in your life. All other people are basically being parasitically feasted upon in all realms, dense and less dense, and they're being used as conduits to distract one another, everybody, just distract each other so they don't know who they are and they can be feasted on for all, forever. And the cycle continues and it just continues. And, and that's what's been going on with humanity and, and this existence in this realm, or this layer, I should say. So with that understanding, how all beings are vehicles or conduits, you can see how you came to be. A parent is really a conduit. We should be consciously coming and going from vessel to vessel. There's no death. You know, you, you can project your con. You could basically, you know, you plan when you come in and you plan when you leave. You know, so or you know, basically transfer consciousness. So if you have a, a conscious rearrival, what people call a birth. A birth, you know, humans don't have birth, you know, you're in an amniotic fluid. Ships birth. Look into, you know, uh, into that. You know, look into the birthing of ships and how they related to, they related that. Uh, ships birth, and then they bring the Port Authority a certificate of manifest, manifest, which is also known as a birth certificate. Do you get it now? Do you understand how you're a stock? Just like a ship with, you know, what, what's on the ship, the certificate of manifest. What's the value of the ship? Same thing with the birth certificate. You not birthed, you re-arrive. There are no surprises in a conscious re-arrival. Name, date, sign, everything about that person is communicated well before they physically or densely manifest into this existence or brought through the portal or the conduit known as the parent or parents because both of us have wombs, male and female. And sperm is really a, a manifestation of light as an egg is and they both are on a vibration because sound is light, light is sound. They're on a tune. So when, the, when, the, um, when they're on the same page, same makeup, I should say, you know, they, they, you know they, find, they can find each other. The sperm can find the egg. But when there's hybridization, or just a difference, I should say, the, the tune is thrown off. And the egg will basically push the sperm away until the egg starts to die. And then, it, you know, then its tune is dropped. And then the, then the sperm can find it. Because you know they're they're now finally at the same rhythm, but then you know, you see what that creates a dying egg. Well, you know it will physically manifest itself, and if that happens, in all likelihood you'll have problems with eyes and bones. And that's what you know. And if your eyes are not brown, that is a deficiency. I'm sorry to say, your eyes should be brown or damn near black. Basically, we all we come from the black. You know, and and really, you know, I don't really want to get into it. I know people are going to say it's racist and all that, but you're black. Everybody's black on the planet, just different shades of black. And um, I know they want to say that white is, is, uh, is all color, but they will look at anything from the 40s and 50s and see that it says whites only, coloreds only. You know, but regardless, when you have a child, you're ushering in an ancestor of yours. You're re-arriving. You're bringing in a re-arrival. You're a conduit or a portal into this existence. You, you have thought yourself into this body unconsciously you know some people do it consciously just because you can't or didn't doesn't mean others can't or have it and the dense the dense physical mass happens when consciousness collides with atoms so basically 
the consciousness will collide with the atoms and then they will begin to bunch and bunch and manifest themselves until sperm, egg, fetus, zygote, whatever, until they get to that point, you know, where it's a human human being. And then if you look at the astrology of things, how everything is on cycles, all your organs, you know, ovaries, sperm, eggs, it's all on a cycle, then you understand and how you are a universe, then you understand how you can see how each sperm is already what it is as far as a sign goes. And then it's like charting the stars, you can chart your cycle, you will know the sign, the person that will come from your womb as a male or a female, as a male, because you are sending the, the, uh, the light being into another womb to, to come out. Basically, you know, it's, you know, you chart the stars, it's the same as, you know, charting yourself. So that's how you know when a person is coming. That's how they know when the, um, what do they call that, Dalai Lama? They, they, it's all astrology. That's how they know when it re-arrives. They chart the stars. They know when he's re-arriving. Go to an area, because the stars will tell them, and they say, is anybody having a baby in this area? You know, they'll put that, they'll subject that baby to things that were the Dalai Lamas. They'll find out who the Dalai Lama is, and that's how they do it. Same thing with the Jesus story. Three kings and all that. And yeah, it's all astrology. Again, like in the case, and if you think this is impossible to think yourself into existence, just think about the, all the, the hysterical pregnancies. That's a thing. Look it up. That's a woman who truly thinks she is pregnant to the point where she is pregnant. She thought a pregnancy into existence. And women can have children without men. It's called parthenogenesis. It's an actual thing. So you can say whatever you want. Yes. You, can, you, think, you think yourself into existence. It's all energy. Your consciousness is an energy, a creative energy. You are a creator. Everyone is a creator. Or you can look at hypochondriacs. They think themselves into sickness. Let me see how much time I got left. Long video, okay. If a rearrival is unconscious, though, the child is born sick. The conduits are already sick, you know, because they were unconscious, because the whole thing is unconscious. The parents, the conduits, you, you're all, because human harvesting is going on. Really, it's just light energy, like light being harvesting. They're bringing you this light being into this dense realm unconsciously so they can feed off your energy, parasites. And they physically manifest as other people or other things. But, you know, they're really, that's just the physical dense manifestation of what's really going on. So, an unconscious re-arrival, the child is likely to be conditioned to the culture of death and, and basically be told that any of his thoughts are uh, ele not even elementary and they're stupid and they don't know who they are and that you're going to die and this is the first time you've been here and that any thoughts you had about a past life, because if you look at it online, there are plenty instances of children, especially between, you know, under the ages of four, talking about their past lives and who they were, and, you know, exact details, even down to diaries and how they died and everything. And parents just shush them up in the conditioning go, and they're getting sick by what they're feeding them, more dense food, more dense food, as the years go on, and they're being conditioned, and then, you know, totally forgot who you were, who you are, what you are. So the child is likely to be traumatized, too. Whether it was in the womb, whether it was at birth, circumcision, vaccines, um, all of that. It's all trauma. Um, and again, like I said, other people are conduits. Things might happen to you that, or, you know, you could be already infected. And, you know, trauma could happen where you're a baby and you get injured or someone injures you. But you're, it's all conduits. You're all just being used to traumatize. So you continue to not know who or what you are. So you are traumatized until you forget so when you re-arrive, you're fragmented in your essence is not totally occupying the vessel. So, you know, it might, you know, the vessel might come in, it'll have your essence, but it'll have paras a parasitic being as well, occupying it. And, and it's our, and, and you know, basically the body's open. Anybody can come in and out of it. Just a, basically a car left with its keys in it somewhere. And um, so if you cleanse, like I've been doing, and, and you become less and less dense, you see there are no past lives. In that sense, there is just life. There's no past lives in that sense, I mean. Like, there's no, oh, I died, and then uh, there's a past life before that. There is just life. There's just consciousness. You just transcend into other layers, other densities. And many dreams are really past life experiences. And, you know, you need, that's why if you're less dense and you go to sleep with a purpose, you will vividly, you know, experience your dreams more. 
you know, no, no food or, or drugs four or five hours before sleep would help. Just, just saying, you know, just stop. No cigarettes, none of that. Just four or five hours, just water. Just go with just water four or five hours before sleep. Stop eating four or five hours before you go to sleep and you'll see a major improvement and remove all electronics from around you that could interfere. So many dreams, like I said, are, your, are you know, you know, they're really, they're really past life experience. So look at your reflection in your dreams. See who you are. And you know, we're so distracted in the dense, we just don't know. We don't know who we are. We don't realize who everyone else is. If we did, we would know that everyone we're meeting is someone that we have already met before. Everyone. They're your family. Everyone you meet. And whether it's fleeting or not, it's just they're on their procession or their journey. And you know, the energies collide and leave that residue across each other and it happens again. It's just a, it's a revolution. It's just a the revolution around, you know, your revolution because you're a universe or a world. As you know, so if you, you know, if you realize that, then you know that there are no coincidences. You know, many people already know this, but it's at a more of a subconscious level. And the subconscious is really the front conscious. So the more, you know, cleansed, the more conscious you become, you know, you know, you realize this. You realize you're a creator. You know, you should build your own world. You know, the less dense and dense worlds, you know. Someone will follow you into your dreaming world, or something, I should say, and feed off you. And if you don't know, you know, how to consciously be in that realm and, and how to build, something will build, use your creative energy to build what it wishes. And that's what's going on in the physical. People being used, their energy is being used parasitically to build what they wish. You know, think about a basketball player. Just, you know, just think about what's built, or a boxer, a prize fighter, anybody, what's built off of them, all the energy, what's made off of them. Just a physical, denser manifestation of what's really going on inside of them. So, are your thoughts yours? You know, know your value, know your power, you know. It's all made off your energy, everything. It's all made off your energy, and every action has a reaction, and it all ripples. And there's no concept of time in that. So, you know, you just got to realize that, you know, you've been calculating, whenever you calculate your movements, when you do things for money, name, or fame, you become dead and dull. And, you know, it's just another form of deterioration, you know, just deterioration. You've, you're deteriorating, so you measure it and you say that's what life is. Come on, man, wake up, you know, be conscious of everything you're doing. You know, anybody, like they say about the chakras, if you're living from that root chakra, you have a block there, the only thing that you'll be able to, the only thing you'll be concerned with is eating and sleeping. And that's most people, that's why they have a basketball right here, because they're blocked at that level. They're dense at that level. But if, that, if they remove that waste from the intestines and the colon and all that, then they could, you know, they could see, you know, they could really, you know, they could get more conscious in their existence and they could see they could be more concerned with different things in their life and you know and their, their abilities so um i love y'all and i hope you got as much as you could from that and all the haters you're just a conduit and i love you and i'll take your energy gladly <laughs>